All right. Chilly morning. Brisk yeah. fall morning. Brisk fall morning. That's good work. Yep. Uh, I kind of figured we'd have some more people out in the vehicles this morning. Or so. So, yeah, I guess y'all hear me good out there? All right. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at that. I was like, yeah, I mean, we're starting to get things ready inside, but we're not quite ready here yet. So I was thinking, you know, it might be a little short this morning, but maybe people sit out there. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> so, but. Uh, I guess everybody here might have been, was here probably last week. Uh, we did decide October we're going to use this transition month. We'll have like have everything ready inside by the first Sunday of October, so that we can't you know. So anybody wants to sit inside can, you know. Um, but we'll use October as a transition month, you know. And if it gets you know too cold out here, we'll we, we'll be ready. We can just cut, move on in. Which I don't know if we have another morning like this. What do y'all think? We ought to be about ready to move in or you stay out here? Huh? In. In. Okay. <laughs> well, all right. Well, we'll yeah, we'll kind of play October by year. Um, but yeah, we are. But we'll we'll make sure it's ready by the first Sunday. So anybody, anybody, does, you know, if it's too cold out here and anybody wants to go in, we'll be ready to. You know, they can do that. Go in there and sit. Um, so we'll be, we're working towards that. We already got the hymnals and everything out of the pews and. Uh, Got to get it cleaned up in there. You tell nobody's been in there uh, in a while. Uh, walking through, there's cobwebs everywhere and stuff, so we got to clean it up a little bit. But, um, and then next Sunday, I won't be here. I'll be preaching in, uh, up in the parish next week, but Charlotte's got the service next week. Um, since they started back to, you know, having service again up there, I've only been there one time, you know, so... You know, this will be the second time I'll be up there. But then starting October, they're going to be starting at nine uh, at 11 o'clock up there at Shady Grove. So I'll be preaching here and then starting back kind of my normal schedule. Uh, I'll, I'll be preaching here and then getting on the road and heading back up there and preach up there. So, yeah, some things are 
kind of slowly starting to get back to normal. So that, that's good to good to see. So, but, all right. Um, are there any other announcements that need to be made this one? Justin, I want to thank uh, Charlotte, Diane, and Maylie again. For, uh, and John. Mowing. Uh, well, it was delayed this time because of the rain, but we mowed yesterday. Um, and uh, just want to thank them. And this next go around, we should be able to go two weeks, so I've given everybody a well in advance to. <laughs> And we'll plan on doing it at uh, 5 30 on a Thursday. Uh, we may have to up it a little bit, but right now, two weeks from now. Okay. So, so still great for those helping with the yard. And so hopefully, two weeks this time, but 5 30 on Thursday, we'll keep everybody updated. But. And we may have to move it forward a couple of days according to how it grows, but I think these cold nights, it's going to yeah. slow down. Yeah, it, it should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, getting a little, it's starting to get a little chilly at night, which. Fine by me. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Oh, Thunder Sunday. Oh, uh, we do have Thunder Sunday uh, can back there because there's only you know there's only a few of us here last week, so we put the figure we put the Thunder Sunday can back out there again this week. Uh, and the suggestion was made uh, for it to help the uh, students uh, who uh, from like David County Schools that wouldn't have meals without help from schools. Like so. a food camp. Like food pantry, yeah. So, um, so I mean, that, it'll go to help David County students. I mean, that's what we're gonna try to do. You know, try to you know help that, uh, those who need food. So, um, so we'll yeah figure out the best way to make that happen. But yeah, um, yeah. So make sure you see that on the way out. Drop, drop me in change or bills that you got in there. Okay. Anything else? If not, then. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Gracious and almighty God, Lord, we are so grateful, Lord, for the opportunity to come here to your house to worship your holy name this day. Lord, even though it is a little bit chilly out here, Lord, we are here to worship you. And Lord, we know that you are here among us. You have promised that where two or more are gathered in your name, you will be in their midst. Lord, we just pray for your Holy Spirit to move in mighty ways this day. Let everything said and done be for your glory. So Lord, Drew, draw us closer together and closer to you this day. So that when we leave this place, Lord, we will go forth refreshed and ready to spread your word, your love. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right. And we continue in worship this morning. Thought I'd do a couple uh, familiar. So one love divine, all loves excelling.
Amazing grace, my chains are gone. forever ours. Amen? Amen. Oh, good stuff. <laughs> uh, as we move into our time of prayer this morning, any praises or thanksgivings that you would share with the church this morning? Have you seen God at work in your life this week? Call me our birthday <laughs> Friday and say, I'm thankful that we got to know each other and get to celebrate birthdays. Okay. I only had a birthday Friday. Anybody else celebrate the birthday? Okay. We want to sing happy birthday this morning? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to sing happy birthday. Right. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tommy. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Anyone else? Yep. 
You have to know God is around for the beauty and the change in the seasons. I mean, we are still able to tell the change in the seasons, so that's a good thing. Right. Um, I'm just thankful for the cool weather. <laughs> Yeah, I'm thankful for the cooler weather too. I know some people might not be. But, uh, well, it makes uh, it a lot different at work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, but one thing about it, we do, like you said, we do get to see the beauty of the changing seasons, and and got we you know, and that's God's handiwork. You know, and that we can, you know, we can see, you know, fall. Turn, I mean, spring or spring turn into summer, and summer turn into fall, and you know, it won't be long. We'll be seeing the changing colors and. You know, that's this is my favorite time of year. I think I've heard me say that before, but it is. <laughs> so, yeah. I think we also, um, for those of us who are aware, with Tony being in the hospital, God's been at work with him um, because he was pretty critical and he's been updated a little bit. So, uh, we can yeah. see God still working on Tony. Amen. Yeah, so yeah, with Tony, yeah, we do need to we need to keep praying, praying hard. But uh, he was in very critical condition. He has been at least upgraded to the critical. Right? And, uh, has there been any any other changes? No, they're still trying to wean him off the food fighters, but he's not talking to the ventilator. Okay. So still trying to wean him off the ventilator right now, but he is at least he's, I mean, he, he's resting. I mean, then I think they're doing everything they can, and, and they've been able to do some FaceTime, you know, with him. So at least they're, you know, they can see him. Huh? Okay. Yeah, so that's good. So they can talk to him and pray with him. And we, uh, the other day we got on there with him and got and sang victory in Jesus while he was with him. And I mean, no, I mean, he's sleeping, but we know he can hear him. So, uh, yeah, so keep praying hard. Okay. But thank, thankful the Lord got back. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, everybody. Everybody for all the faith and all the blessings. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. All right. Are there any other prayer requests or praises you would lift up this morning? I think we need to remember all the others who have COVID too. Um, I, I haven't heard anything about Jody's dad lately, but I know he had it too. And mm -hmm. It's still very much out there. Yeah. Um, we need to pray for those who are battling that. And uh, a girl that I work with lost her son uh, last one day last week. I guess it was on the weekend. I'm not sure. 18 years mm -hmm. old. Uh, him and the boy that was with him who was also 18 both mm -hmm. lost their lives and so she's having a very hard time with that okay so the family is these two 18 year old boys that lost their lives um and all those you know and then you know all those struggling with covid right now that's and i found out after uh church last sunday that my best friend nathan who has, has preached here uh for me um that he, him and his family were diagnosed with it. Mm -hmm. um, his wife brought it, I think she got it from work and, and brought it home to the family, unfortunately. And, um, they, and uh, she had, had, has had some other issues, so I think they're trying to get that, make sure that was straightened out, try to help her get better from the COVID. But so they're, um, you yeah, know, just pray they keep getting better and, and too. So, yeah. Anyone else who'd lift up this one? I'd like to lift the price again. Um, the equipment that they use to do uh, the scans um, was not working last week, so they had to reschedule it, and now it's the beginning of October that they'll find out how he's doing. And he has another uh, round of chemo this coming week. Okay, so keep praying for price. I don't really know what how he's going yet because the equipment wasn't working, but it'll uh, right. be October. But let's have another round of chemo this week. Yeah. And can you pray for our country? Can you so pray much for our country? battling back and forth between races, between I don't know. It's like people just find a reason to argue <clears> anymore. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, keep praying for our country. I know in. 
Um, I know before the last presidential election was when we started the prayer meeting, and that was one of the reasons why we started it, um, was so that we could just pray hard for our country and, and, and everything going on and pray for revival. And um, we need to keep praying hard. You know, there's yeah, so much division, so much hatred, and, you know, I, I remember seeing something on Facebook, uh, it was, um, you know, I think, I mean, I, and I know I've shared at least once, you know, the right wing and the left wing, wing need to remember that they're part of the same bird. Yeah. Uh, you know, and when you're fighting so much back and forth, you can't do anything, and if you only got one wing flying, trying to fly, it don't work. You know, it's, you know, we need... You know, everybody trying to work together for the good of the country, and that's not happening right now. So we need to pray for all our politicians, all those running for office, and and just pray for God's hand to be in all of it. That he, you know, that he would lead them, and they would let him lead. You know, we need to pray hard. And Mike is doing better. He should be back next week. Right. Hopefully. Right. Mike's doing better. Hopefully be back next week. Okay. Hmm. Nathan should be better. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Dustin is talking about the bickering and fighting going on, but there's still a lot of love in this country because I see a bunch of truck drivers, the job that I do, mm -hmm. and with all this going on, occasionally you'll run across a truck driver that's got an attitude, but since all this has been going on, I, I can't recall of, of any race, Hispanic, black, white. I mean, when you pull up to them and tell them where they go, we all, I mean, it's, it's just been nice. I mean, it's, all right. so there's still a lot of love out there. Yeah, there is. Yeah, and we, we yeah, I mean, not like, like I said before, you know, with the press, if it bleeds, it leads. They gonna do whatever, you know, they gonna present. <laughs> all the sensational stuff on, on the news. Um, but there is still a lot of good at, at work in this country. And God, I mean, God is at work. I mean, you know, we might not always be able to see, especially if we try to watch the news, we might not necessarily see where God's at work. But if we open our eyes and look around us, he is here, still here. He is still moving. You know, and there is a lot of good that is going on too. You know, and there's a lot. And, you know, there there is revival happening. You know, they're it. I mean, some of the places that they've really been had the strictest, you know, restrictions on because of COVID, like there are thousands of people being baptized, thousands of people that are showing up for church. You know, and, you know, we had, and, and you know, we might think we've been restricted, you know, pretty good here, but, you know, these places where they're still saying they can't go to church and can't do this and that, and people are saying, well, we're going to anyway. And, um, and I mean, we need to, you know, really be praying especially for the pastors on the front lines of the, the you know you know pastors that are i mean being threatened i think with being arrested and there i mean for church which is you know strange to think of in our own country you don't hear that on the news but it's happening i mean i know california is one of those places i think i heard i saw i saw that they had thousands that were i think baptized on the beach within the last couple weeks i think i mean god is moving you know and you know, we need to get on board with what he's doing and, and join him in what he's doing. And, you know, let there be revival. Let it start right here. Anyone else? Dustin, we talked about people that have COVID, but we also need to pray for the families of those who have COVID because even though they're not the ones with it, they struggle right along beside them and... and you know, maybe sometimes it's even harder because they're watching something happen that's not mm -hmm. good. Right. Yeah. But yeah, but for families of all those with the you know that are dealing with COVID too, it's um, and especially because you I mean you know they can't be with their family members, and that makes it harder too. So, anyone else? Not other unspoken requests by show of hands this morning. And as we go to the Lord in prayer, let us begin in silence as we offer our own prayers and petitions before God. Let us pray.
Almighty God, Lord Almighty, oh, gracious King, creator of the universe, of all it is, seen and unseen. Lord, we come before you this morning. Lord, we come before you with gratitude in our hearts. For for all the ways that you have been at work in this world and in our lives. Lord, sometimes we have to open our eyes a little more and, and look. Because maybe you're not working in the ways that we expect you to. <coughs> But Lord, we know you are here. We know you are moving in this world. Lord, we know you are greater than anything that's going on in this world right now. You are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And you are our God. Our Abba, Father, Daddy. You let all of that, Lord, you know us and you love us. Well, we can never thank you enough, Lord, for all that you are, for all that you do. Lord, Lord for your love and your grace that are new every morning. It doesn't matter who we are, it doesn't matter. What we've done, how many times we sinned against you or against others, Lord, how many times we have fallen. You never leave us alone. You have never abandoned us and you never will. You promise to be with us always to the end of the age. And you have proven faithful to that over and over again. Lord, we know you are here. We know you are moving. Lord, that's why we lift up those who are on our hearts and our minds this morning. Lord, all those who are dealing with this virus. Lord, those who are sick and in those the fam their families. Lord, those who are struggling financially. Lord, or because of isolation and there are other things because of this virus. Lord, so many ways it has affected so many people. And Lord, we just pray for your Holy Spirit to move in their lives. Lord, let them know that they're not alone. They're not forgotten. They're not forsaken. Lord, all those dealing with other illnesses. Lord, those dealing with wildfires and earthquakes and hurricanes. Lord, just take care of them, Lord. Do your thing. Show off, show out. Work where there is no other way. Lord, bring glory to your name. Lord, we will thank you and we will praise you for it. For it all. Lord, even before we see the answer to our prayers, because Lord, we know you will answer our prayers. Lord, you are greater than anything we will ever face in this world. Lord, we thank you that you are with us. Lord, just use us as you see fit each and every single day. Lord, it's all for your glory. It is all about you. Lord, we pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We prepare to see the word this morning. To hear the simple praise song as the deer panteth for the water. And you're right out of scripture. Right out of Psalms. <laughs>
This morning, I invite you to hear the words of another song, Psalm 105. I invite you to hear these words this morning. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he has uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He is mindful of his covenant forever, the word that he commanded for a thousand generations. The covenant that he made with Abraham is sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statue, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying to you, I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance. When there were few in number, of little account, and strangers entered, wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he allowed no one to oppress them. He rebuked kings on their account, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. When he summoned famine against the land and broke every staff of bread, he had sent a man ahead of him, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. His feet were hurt with fetters. His neck was put in a collar of iron. Until what he had said came to pass, the word of the Lord kept testing him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions to instruct his officials at his pleasure and to teach his elders wisdom. Then Israel came to Egypt. Jacob lived as an alien in the land of Ham. And the Lord made his people very fruitful and made them stronger than their foes. Whose hearts he then turned to hate his people to deal craftily with his servants. He sent his servant Moses and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They performed his signs among them and miracles in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made the land dark. They rebelled against his words. He turned their waters into blood and caused their fish to die. Their land swarmed with frogs, even in the chambers of the kings. He spoke, and their came swarms of flies and gnats throughout their country. He gave them hell for rain and lightning that flashed through their land. He struck their vines and fig trees and shattered the trees of their country. He spoke, and the locusts came, and young locusts without number. They devoured all the vegetation in the land and ate up the fruit of their ground. He struck down all the firstborn of their land, the first issue of all their strength. And he brought Israel out with silver and gold, and there was no one among their tribes who stumbled. Egypt was glad when they departed, for dread of them had fallen upon it. He spread a cloud for a covering, and fire to give light by night. They asked, and he brought quails, and he gave them food from heaven in abundance. He opened a rock, and the water gushed out. It flowed through the desert like a river, for he remembered his holy promise. So he brought his people out with joy, his chosen ones with singing. He gave them the lands of the nations, and they took possession of the wealth of the peoples, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thank you. Look, last few weeks been looking at you know this series. You look at it, God's promise to us. God's promise that when He says over and over, "I am with you." You know, in Jesus' last words to his disciples as he was taken up out of their sight, Lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. You know, that is God's promise to us even now. I am with you. I am with you always. You know, we started looking at this with David, you know, in the wilderness on the run for his life. You know, he was having to hide out in the cave and he, you know, and me when he thought he might be able to lay low in the land of Gath, which I don't under, really understand. 
I mean, because that was, a, you know, where Goliath was from. You know, and so he, somehow he thought he was going to lay low in the land of, you know, Goliath that he had killed. And they recognized him. And he had to act in, literally insane to get away from him. You know, and hiding out in the cave, and yet he was able to praise God in the midst of it. Even when he was literally in the wilderness, he said, I know God is with me. And he began to praise God and praise God as, as that reminded him of who his God was, that his God was greater than anything that he was facing right at that moment, anything that he would face in his life. Yeah, and I know there's a lot of people right now that might seem like they're going through the wilderness. Yeah, but if we begin to praise God, you know, it will remind us of how great he is. And he's greater than anything we will face in this world. You know, and then we talked about you know, the three Hebrew young men, Hananiah, Me, uh, Mishael, and Azariah. Remember? Hananiah, Me, Mishael, and Azariah. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, and I keep trying to say those names because I want to remember them by their Hebrew God-given names instead of the names that reminded them that they were servants in Babylon. But when they refused to step to a bow before King Nebuchadnezzar or to the tower to the God that he had set up, knowing that they, were, they would be literally tossed into the fire, they, they stood. You know, they didn't know what was going to happen. They didn't know the rest of the story. They didn't know that God would send an angel into the fire with them to deliver them. But they still stood, and they told King Nebuchadnezzar that his sense didn't mean a thing to him because God would either deliver them out of his hands or he wouldn't. But whatever happened was in God's hands, not King Nebuchadnezzar's. And they stood, and God was with them. You know, and there's a lot of, you know, it, Christians throughout the ages, I mean, have, we have who have literally faced the fire because of their faith. You know, and God was with them. Yeah, and God might not have delivered them from death, but for us, for Christians, even death is not a bad thing. We might fear death, but we know death is just a doorway to be in with our God. So the worst thing this world can do to us is not the worst thing. Because for us to be absent from the body is to be present with our Lord. Yeah, and I really do believe that we are getting closer and closer to the time that it, you know, we're going to have to face the fire because of our faith. If we're going to be, if we are really going to stay faithful and serve God, you know, the fire's coming. You know, and we're seeing it. You know, when Christians right now in our country, we're starting to see, you know, Christians that are facing arrest because they're going against the COVID restrictions and trying to have church. Yeah, and, you know, places that's, you know, still are not letting them have church. I mean, here, at least when we were getting to the point like we're able to do more and more, we can gather together. They can't, these places in the U.S. where they cannot. And, you know, and they're facing arrest because of it. And churches are facing huge fines. Yeah, time's coming where we're going to have to be bold for our faith. You know, we can't take it as lax as we we have done. We might have to face the fire, but God will be with us even then. And whatever we face in this world it will never be as great as the God who is in us. Amen? And then last week, talk about God being with us when we are weak. You know, even Paul, the, you know, this great missionary who had seen so many things and had done so many, you know, things, started so many churches and he said that God had given him a thorn in the flesh to keep him humble. Yeah, and this was something that was painful to him. Not just some minor irritation. This was something that was painful. But it kept him humble and reminded him that God, that he needed God. Even all the things he had seen and all the things he had done, that he still needed God. And you know, he said even though he cried out to God, God said, no, he didn't take the thorn from him. He said, because my strength is made perfect in your weakness. My strength comes into its own 
in your weakness. So Paul said, I've now I brag. He said, even because even the weaker I become, the stronger I, I am. And that's for all of us. The weaker we become, the stronger we are, because that's when it really steps in and it, it works in ways that we can't. When we let him do his thing, he can do a whole lot more than we never imagined. And this morning, you know, to wrap up this series, you know, I want to look at this Psalm 105, a psalm that, you know, kind of goes back and tells some of the, sport, the history of Israel. Reminds them of their history, the ways that God had been at work in their lives, you know, and, and their people. You know, remind them that he is with them even when they fail. You know, God saying, I am with you even when you fall, even when you fail. I mean, it starts out, you know, the psalm starts out, I'll give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the people. He said, you know, sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful works. He said, you know, let everybody know what God has done. Let everybody know how great he is. And then he goes on to remind them of their history. You know, going all the way back to the promise that God made to their ancestors, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, he told them that they would inherit the land, the promised land. You know, and for a long time, they just kind of wanted, like they wandered around, in, you know, because they couldn't take possession of the land. You know, but God was still working towards that day. You know, and... You know, when, even when famine came and they had to go to Egypt, God had already prepared the way with Joseph. Now, I remember the story of Joseph, right? The, the favorite of his father, Jacob. Yeah, he was the one, you know, he, he, you know, his father, Jacob, he made for him a special coat. You know, some translations say a coat of many colors. Some translations say a coat with sleeves, long sleeves. You know, we don't really know exactly what it, you know meant the, but it was a special coat that showed that he was different. He was special. He was the favorite, and because of that, his brothers hated him. Right? They hated him. I mean, they were jealous as could be. And Jacob did, or Joseph didn't help things, did he? When Joseph started having his dreams, where the you know, his brothers were going to be bowing down to him. And even his father, Jacob, were going to be bowing down to him. I can just imagine, you know, they, they, they he was kind of gleeful. And he said, you know, I had this dream where y'all are all bowing down to me. Which just made him hate him all the more. But I think that was partly his fault. <laughs> So he knew they were jealous, and he still went, and he was telling them all this, and I could just kind of imagine that he was just kind of gleeful in it. He had to learn, too. And part of that was for him to fall. They put him into a pit, and they were going to kill him. And then they sold him into slavery. Now, I can imagine for him, that felt like he was, he was falling about as far as he could go. Then he got to Egypt, and you know, at first he saw some success in Potiphar's house. He was still a slave, but he saw some success there until Potiphar's wife got a, her eye on him. And when he wouldn't do anything with her, she accused him of trying to have sex with her. Got thrown into prison. And there he sat for a long time until he was able to interpret the dreams of some of Pharaoh's servants, and then the dreams came true. And then he got to interpret the dreams of Pharaoh. And finally, God raised him up over all the land of Egypt. You know, he had fallen a long way. But even then, God was with him. You know, for us, we know the story, right? I mean, we can go back and we can read the story. We know that God had his, had his hand on him the whole time. But I can imagine for Joseph, there were times he wondered if God was with him at all. There were times he wondered what was going on when he had his neck was put in a collar of iron. 
You, you imagine that. And his feet hurt with fetters. And then God raised him up. God was with him. And then, you know, all, you know, Jacob's family is all able to go to Egypt. And then they start, you know, even with the famine in the land, they're able to start multiplying and to the point that the Egyptians become afraid of them. That's the reason why the Egyptians started oppressing them. Because the Egyptians were afraid of them. Because they were multiplying and God was blessing them so much. So they started oppressing them, made them into slaves. You know, making them make bricks. And then even making them go out and gather, you know, everything to make the bricks without giving, you know, and then making them make as many, just as many bricks as they did before. And then Pharaoh even trying to, you know, kill all the, you know, all the newborn males. Which didn't work, but he was trying. And they were crying out. You know, they had fallen. And God sent Moses to deliver them. You know, they had fallen. And yet God was with them. God heard their cry. And he had already prepared the way with Moses having the position that he had. You know, my God prepared the way. God was with them the whole time. And then, you know, he reminds us here of the story, you know, the, the plagues that went upon Egypt. So that Egypt was finally like, get out of here. Get out. Go. And then, in the wilderness, the Israelites. You know, they saw God with them. Literally. I mean, can you imagine that? I mean, the clouds to lead them by day, the pillar of fire by night, they could see God's presence literally with them. They had passed through the Red Sea on dry land. They knew that God was with them, Right? They knew it. And yet here he kind of glosses over a little bit that some things that any of the Israelites that had heard this, it should have convicted them. So if you, did you catch it? They asked that he brought quails and gave them food from heaven in abundance. You remember those stories? Because the Israelites started complaining. They got the Back to Egypt committee together. They said, why would you bring us out here into the wilderness to die of hunger? Remember that? They started testing God. They started quarreling and complaining. And God said, okay, here's manna. Literally food from heaven. When the dew dried in the mornings, there was food on the ground that provided for their sustenance. And then when they complained and said, oh, but look, we want some meat. What about some meat to eat with this man? And he brought the quail. He provided for them. And then he says here, he opened a rock and water gushed out. It flowed through the desert like a river. Because again, they were complaining. Oh, why would you bring us out here to die of thirst? We've been better off back in Egypt. I mean, we might have been slaves, but at least we had plenty to eat and drink. And... Yep, yeah, they were complaining against God. And then, but yet, what did God do? God provided for them water. In the wilderness, in the middle of the desert. Now, because they never did trust in him, they didn't get to see the promised land. They never got to step foot. That generation didn't, but God was with them all the way through the wilderness. And we know, it, you know, even more after that, after the song. I mean, how many times did Israel fail God? How many times, even if they had, they had taken possession of the, the promised land, how many times did they go astray, start following the gods you know, of the other peoples, 
and stop worshiping the one true God, the one who had delivered them out of Egypt, the one who had literally been with them and shown his presence to them in so many powerful ways, and yet they failed over and over again. But what did God do? He stayed with them. He never abandoned them, never left them alone. Even when they had faced exile, he, he had tried to warn them. He said, don't start acting right. So what's going to happen? But even then, he brought them back. He was stayed with them. Never abandoned them, never forsook them. You know, we see in the New Testament how many times did the disciples fail. Even Peter, you know, he said, on this rock I'll build my church, but how many times did Peter, I mean, even Peter had to get rebuked by Jesus. You know, how many times did Peter fall? Yet yeah, God was with him. You know, the Bible is so brutally honest. And I appreciate it. It's not just lifting up heroes of the faith who always did everything right. No. The Bible tells us when people failed, and they failed hard. And sometimes they, that sometimes they, they, they fail because of circumstances. I mean, things that weren't necessarily their, their own fault, which might have really felt unjust. And then sometimes they fail because they screwed up. But no matter what, God was with them. And you know, God is with us today. You know, I know there's been plenty of times in my life where I have fallen. Times where I've messed up because I try to do things my own way. Times where I fell because of other circumstances, just like everybody else. But I know the only reason I'm still here is because God was with me. God was with me. And if he could be with me and help me in, even in the midst of times I've failed him, and I know he'd be with anybody. Yep. Yeah. You know, Paul, I, I, I understand what Paul talked about being, the, you know, the chief of sinners. You know, knowing what you're supposed to do and you don't always do it. But even then, God never left him. He never will, because that's his promise. That's for every one of us. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter how many times you fall, or fail, how many times you sin against God, God will never leave you alone. He will always be with you. He will always call your relationship, always call you ever deeper into a relationship with him. You know, there, there's times where we're going to fall in this life. That's, that's life. And there's times we might really talk to God and say, what in the world? What are you doing? How did you let this happen? And there might be times we say, God, I know I screwed up. And I know I don't deserve anything from you. So please help me. You know what? In them and all of them. He is with you. He will never leave you. Never forsake you. No matter what. You can trust in him. And that is God's promise to us. God's promise. When we're in the wilderness, God's promise when we face the fire, God's promise when we are weak, and God's promise when we fall, when we fail. I am with you. I am with you. Always. Amen.
as we close out our time together today, uh, with no just simple praise on. I know I did it recently, but Lord, I lift your name on high. that you have always been with us. Lord, you have always been working out your plan in our lives and in this world. Lord, even when we might not have seen it, even when we don't, couldn't understand, you have always been here. Lord, we can see it all the way through the Bible times and even today. Lord, Help us to open our eyes, open our hearts, to see where you are working, Lord, and join you in that. Lord, knowing that no matter what we face in this world, Lord, that even if we truly start standing up and proclaiming your deeds, proclaiming your grace and your love, Lord, we might have to face the fire, but Lord, we know that no matter what, you are with us. You are with us always. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you. And Lord, as we leave this place today, we pray that the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Father Almighty, and the power and presence of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and always. And give us peace.